In this video I'll be showing you the restoration of a Matchbox number 66 Greyhound coach. Built between 1967 and 1969, this particular model will be very challenging because as you can see it is in very poor condition. Well, having a look at this coach, it's in quite poor condition. The previous owners uh, just poured paint all over it to make it look good. But you know what? It's pretty much ruined it. I'm going to have to strip all this off and uh, it's going to take a bit of effort, especially the windscreen. Uh, to begin with though, I will separate the chassis from the body by drilling out these two rivets. I should just be able to pull the base off. So now I've drilled those two rivets out, using a flat bladed screwdriver I gently prise the rear of the base plate off the body and uh, pull it to the rear so the two front tabs disengage and it comes off. What I'm doing now is removing the suspension plate. This particular one's broken in the middle. So I'm going to have to fix that at a later stage. Next, remove the seats. They're actually quite tight to get out. I've got to use some pliers to pull on these. Don't want to break them. They come out. So I'll have to get that paint off there and give them a clean of some bleach. Then they'll be ready to go back in. The only other thing to do now is to remove the three rivets in there which are holding the windscreen assembly in. So I'll do that now. So having drilled out the rivets, this should now be a simple case of pushing the windscreen assembly out. However this one's a little bit sticky because there's so much paint been poured on this thing it's, uh, it's actually sort of glued the uh, windscreen assembly into the model so I'm pushing with the screwdriver onto the parts of the screen that you won't see when it's back together that way if I scratch it or crack it it won't be so noticeable it's uh, quite an effort to get this out but I uh, have to persevere with things like this There you go, it's come free. Now just look at the mess of this. Somehow I've got to get this clean because you can't actually buy these. I've looked online and uh, you can't buy replacements. So this is what I've got to work with. So here's all the pieces ready for paint stripping and reassembly. So when I paint strip I use this uh, poly stripper. Got to use rubber gloves with this because if it gets on your skin it stings. Eye protection is also good in case you flick it in your eyes. So just using the paintbrush dab it on the thick paint. There's not a lot of original paint on this model, it's just daubs of whatever paint was put on it by whoever owned it before me. So I'm just giving it a double dose to try and break that down. There's remnants of the old stickers that go on the side also, like some glue and paper residue there. Hopefully that will come off easy. Mm -hmm. 
do the whole thing, there's no rush. It takes a few minutes for the uh, paint stripper to work. This is one of the few models where I have to put a lot of paint stripper on the inside because the paint that was applied is running inside and needs you moving, shouldn't be there. So I'll let that cook for a bit. Now I'll do the uh, chassis. Normally I take the wheels off before doing this. I must have been in a rush this day because I forgot to do it. You don't want to get the paint stripper on the wheels because they can sort of melt a little bit. So after it's reacted, I then use the toothbrush to uh, rub all the uh, blistered paint off in, in water. That also neutralizes the, uh, the paint stripper too. Sometimes you have to do this twice. I think in this case I did because the uh, some of the paint is really very thick, especially on the bump bars, on the back especially, and on the inside. Any stubborn bits I can't get off, I'll just use a pin and a razor blade later. So that's done. So I'll put it over there to dry and start on the chassis. And this one, the black paint comes off real easy, look at that. Give it a good old scrubbing. This is going to be painted gloss black when I finish. Now I'm going to be taking the wheels off. The wheels are held on by that little flange on the end of the axle. So I use my Dremel to run it over the end of the axle to get that burr off. Just like this. Try not to burn up the tyre, and it just, just pulls off like that. So I'll do all the others and move on. Alright, here I am now uh, starting to clean the windows. The only way I can do it is use a razor blade, because if I put like paint thinners on it, it's only going to make it worse. Very tedious job. And to tell her the truth, when I started, I didn't actually think I was going to uh, make much headway. Uh, this paint, it was really thick. I'm just chipping away a little bit at a time. You can see here, I'm trying to dig under the flake just to lift it off to uh, get something, make a gap to get the blade in. get the idea. Very slow but effective. So here's the finished product. After I cleaned it up I gave it a coat of Tamiya 
gloss varnish and that kind of made it look shiny as well so overall I think it came up pretty good considering now it's time to spray the bus so I've given it an undercoat of grey I use the white grey primer because it makes the colours uh, brighter on the finished product not maybe so much for silver but if I'm doing other colours like yellow I find the grey undercoat dulls it down a bit what I've done here is I've super glued a screw inside the cabin there and that's what I'm using to hold whilst I'm spraying it now I'm using some araldite to put the glass back into the body speed this up a bit it's not very interesting seeing me mix up araldite so when it's done, this is the 5 minute arrow dot by the way, so it dries pretty quick. I'm just making sure I haven't got any on my fingers. So what I'm doing here, little tiny blobs, strategically placed. So that when the glass is put back into the, uh, the shell, it doesn't squeegee out. So it's just small amounts. It doesn't need much. I'm doing this because it's impossible to reform these rivets. If anyone has a better idea, let me know. I'm just tap it down with a Q-tip, cotton bud, whatever you call it, and leave it to set. Like I say, five-minute aerodite should take about five minutes. It's looking good. Right, now I'm going to uh, put the seats back in and the suspension plate that I fixed. See, they've been cleaned up again with a razor blade and I gave them a scrub with a toothbrush and some soap and bleach. And this is the suspension bar that I repaired with a bit of plastic card that I had lying around. I just glued it on there with some poly cement oh, this goes back in this is a bit a bit awkward it has to go in square if you try putting it in skew it just don't go so here we go and the suspension unit it's got a little peg there it goes in a hole on the underside of the seats Now for fitting this, the tabs go in the front and then it swings down onto the rivets that I drilled out. Now again, I can't reform the rivets, so I'm going to use some more aldite underneath that plate on the corners at the back. doing is putting the arrow die at the base of these pins and when it's up the right way the arrow die is still fluid it should flow down on top of that plate and hold it all together decent sized blob and I'm putting it 
near the end of the rivet but leaving enough room for it to flow down on top of the plate when I put the plate back in do the same on the other side you don't have to be sparing here you can use as much as you like and another blob and a little bit more on the other side because I've got some some left over so because this takes five minutes to set uh, when I assemble it and set it right side up the arrow die should flow down the post and stick the base on not a very good camera angle Uh, I've put the front tabs in and I'm just pushing down with my thumbs and clicks in. Now flip it over, sit it there, leave it, and the arrow dot should fix the base on. So far so good. Now the last thing to do is to put on some new water slide transfers. Bought these online go on there on the side of the coach now what I had to do was cut these down to fit because they were actually too long so it always pays to kind of do a test fit before you stick them in the water now cut these to the right length and just put them in some lukewarm water one at a time because you really want to work with them one at a time otherwise you end up with loads of floating transfers around in the water and they're difficult to handle if they come off the backing paper they can fold on themselves and then you're in a whole world of pain you've got to throw them away and get some new ones out so this is how you do it once they've been soaking for a while and the transfer's loose you just uh, apply the transfer in position and pull the backing sheet out if you're good at it it should lay perfectly flat but sometimes like me you've got to give it a bit of a, a prod and a poke to get it to look good and to settle on the on the body of the vehicle and here I'm just pushing some air bubbles out and any excess water and here's the final product so this is how it was when I first bought it absolutely crap and here we go this is at the end of it with the transfers on and the new windscreen all polished up I think you'll agree it looks pretty good for what it is <laughs>